Hey, how's it going? Brian here from RVWithTito.com and in this video I wanted to give you a walkthrough of our entire off-grid electrical system in our RV that allows us to uh, to stay for days on end uh, in beautiful locations like this. You know, there's a lot of BLM land and campgrounds that don't have any kind of uh, shore power connection, no electrical hookup, and a lot of them don't even allow generator use after certain hours. So, you know, we've installed all of these systems in our RV that allow us to pretty much live comfortably with the uh, electrical power needs that we have and uh, you know not have to worry about running a generator or be plugged in. Now I've made videos about uh, specific pieces of the system in the past over the last few years but it's been a while since I've actually made a video that talks about the whole setup from one end to the other so that's what I want to do today. And uh, I have uh, diagrams and uh, descriptions all written up on our website so don't have to worry about taking notes throughout this if you're interested in kind of learning about specific pieces of the system. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, I'm going to head inside and show you what we got going on in there. Well since we're not using shore power or a generator we rely 100% on our battery bank to provide all the power in our RV. And that's why I wanted to start inside here because at the end of the day, once everything's all set up and configured, uh, it really boils down to monitoring your battery bank and knowing at any given time what your current state of charge is. So that's the amount of your battery capacity available to you to use. And also being able to see, you know, if you're charging from solar, how much of that charge is coming in. And as you use all the equipment in your RV, you know, it's nice to be able to see how much of a draw or what impact that's having on your battery bank and your current state of charge. So for example here I can see that uh, it's at 93% right now and it started at about 85% this morning. It was really cloudy and overcast this morning so we were pulling in some solar but not much. Now it's uh, gotten a little more sunny and, and we're bringing in more. So I can see right now that I'm at 93% and, uh, and within an hour and 15 minutes that uh, my battery bank is going to be at 100%. Now I can also see here that right now the batteries are taking in about 23 amps uh, to charge the batteries and uh, that's coming from my solar panels. Now if I go here I can see that right now the solar that's coming in is is 27 amps. So 27 amps are being uh, produced from the solar panels themselves and uh, that's going to charge my batteries and uh, power a few other things here in the RV. Now I also have a, a little remote here and that's for my inverter that uh, we can just turn that on and off and see at any given time what the voltage output of the inverter is right now. And uh, it's just a simple remote that has a, an on and an off switch and allows me to turn the inverter off or on to provide power to all of those AC components, those 120 volt AC household uh, plugs throughout the RV. Now our battery bank's located in this uh, converted storage compartment here in our Class C motorhome. This is not where it originally was because we started out with one uh, 12 volt battery when we first got the RV and uh, it was just located in a battery tray mounted under the RV somewhere. So as we expanded our battery bank we had to find a new home for these batteries and uh, this is ultimately where they ended up. And right now we're sitting at four uh, AGMs here, four six volt AGM batteries that are 225 amp hours each. So wired in a, a, a series parallel configuration, uh, the total capacity here is 450 amp hours. Now, as we uh, evolved, we started with that one battery and we doubled that at some point to uh, two batteries. So we had two 12 volt batteries uh, scattered in different places and Eventually I changed that to uh, two 6 volt batteries and moved that uh, into this compartment here, reinforced and there's also a metal uh, steel uh, uh, bar that, that is mounted to the chassis that gives this compartment extra support. And uh, so right now we're sitting at four of these. I upgraded from the two 6 volt to the four 6 volt and went to AGMs and uh, that's where we're sitting right now. Now there's a lot in this compartment right now uh, and it also uh, is important that 
this battery compartment is actually in the compartment where our shore cable is located and uh, that works out really well because we are currently using our shore power cable to uh, power uh, everything on the AC side, 120 volt AC side, through our inverter. All of the negative connections to the battery are actually wired to this uh, negative bus bar which helps simplify all the cabling in here and uh, the output of that actually goes to a cutoff switch that allows us to uh, disconnect uh, battery power whenever we want to without having to disconnect a terminal or something like that which can be a real pain in the butt. Now uh, the output of that, uh, of that cutoff switch then goes to a uh, shunt. So this is a digital shunt that's part of the Cymarine monitoring system that we have that allows us to keep track of all the current going in and out of the battery bank and monitor that on an ongoing basis. Now that's all kind of crammed back in there and difficult to see. All of the inputs to the positive side of the battery all go through this, uh, this post here uh, that helps get it off of the battery and simplify the battery cabling here. Now what's going off of here is the, the main 12 volt output to you know, the rest of the uh, DC electrical system in the RV. And uh, there's also an input here. This main line comes in from the, uh, the solar charging system. So that all goes into this point here. And uh, there's also a connector here that goes directly to our inverter that's fused with a 300 amp uh, bus fuse. All of that is mounted to the top of the compartment here and uh, it's a little, it looks a little snug but it works. On the other side of the RV in this uh, storage compartment is where our inverter is located. Now it's uh, powered from the batteries. This is a Samlex 2000 watt PureSign inverter. And uh, I have it mounted to the side here because it has uh, some vent fans in the back. You can hear it. Um, you can hear the fans working in here because this inverter is actually currently in use. So I have a couple of big holes drilled on the side panel here with screens and, and you know, a way for the heat to, to get out from the inverter so it stays nice and cool. The monitor on the inside of the RV that turns this on and off is uh, wired into this uh, communication port right here on the front. Now the front of the inverter has two uh, AC plugs and you notice they're both taken. This big one here actually goes to the other side of the RV and that's where our shore power cable is actually connected to that receptacle there. So that's wired directly to this cable here. As far as the RV is concerned, you know, when this is plugged in and the inverter is on, it's on shore power since the, the shore power cable is actually connected right to here. You'll notice there's another extension cable here plugged into the other uh, connection here on the output of the inverter. Now that goes to a relay back in the uh, back of the RV where all of my electrical stuff is and that turns off the uh, the power to my converter charger when the inverter is running. I don't want my inverter to be trying to charge the batteries that are also powering the inverter. <laughs> so that's just something else I had to do in my system to make sure that that didn't happen and I have that set up so that it automatically switches it off as soon as there's power to the inverter. Now if you want to learn more about that setup, I did a separate video about that topic and I'll link to it below. Now in this uh, very small compartment here, which is right next to my uh, battery compartment, that you can see over there is uh, where all of the solar charging equipment is. Now I have uh, three solar charge controllers located in this tiny little space and uh, all of the circuit breakers and uh, there's a shunt and uh, you know cutoff switches slash circuit breakers in here. So let me walk you through quickly uh, what's in here. I did another video about you know how I got everything in here and what's actually in here so I'm, I'm gonna give you a link to uh, that to check out. But uh, very quickly the, uh, the, the outputs from the solar panels on the roof are actually all fed into this compartment here. The cables from the solar panels go into uh, these two uh, separate inputs here and uh, this is PV1, PV2 and uh, they both have, uh, have circuit breakers on them so I can turn them off at any given time to, to turn off the solar uh, completely from the inputs of the charge controller. 
I have two arrays, solar arrays, on the roof that I'll show you shortly. And each goes into its uh, respective charge controller. There's a PV1 charge controller, PV2 charge controller here. And there's also a third smaller charge controller here at the top. And what I use that for is for an external uh, array. So I, I usually throw out a couple of uh, small 100-watt uh, um, external uh, flexible solar panels that I can simply plug right in here into this uh, port that I connected here and uh, gives me an extra couple hundred watts of solar when I need it, especially in the mornings and evenings when you want to be able to point it at the sun when the sun's low. So that works out really well just to be able to have a, a third little alternative source for solar when you need it and it's got its own dedicated smaller charge controller. Now I'm using a uh, Victron uh, charge controllers here. I have uh, for the two larger arrays I have an MPPT uh, 100 slash 30 uh, charge controller, so it's a 100 uh, volt and a maximum of 30 amp output charge controllers. For the external array, it's just a small uh, charge controller that outputs up, I think, a max of 15 amps. So works out really well just for a couple of panels. Now the positive and the negative outputs of the solar charge controllers are combined together in a positive and a negative bus bar. So they're parallel connected together so that there's only one positive and one negative output going to charge the batteries. Now the negative output from that negative bus bar goes through this digital shunt which allows me to monitor on my monitoring system specifically how much solar charge I'm getting at any given time and the output of the positive goes through this, uh, this circuit breaker and this is an 80 amp uh, circuit breaker that also functions as a cutoff switch. So I can disconnect all the uh, solar input from the batteries altogether by just flipping this uh, switch here and I can also disconnect the inputs to the charge controllers using the inputs here on these circuit breakers coming in from the solar panels. So I can completely isolate uh, power in and out of the solar charge controllers here if I ever needed to uh, reset them or uh, do any work here and not have to unscrew or unbolt anything. So it's pretty convenient. So let's head up on the roof and I'll show you the two separate solar arrays that I have mounted up there that come into this spot here. Up here on the roof I have about a combined 550 watts of solar and uh, that, you know, plus those 200 extra watts that I can throw out with those other 100 watt panels that I can put on the ground and move those around. So combined, uh, probably about, what, 750 watts of solar. Uh, most of the time I'm just using the solar on the roof and I only put the, the external panels out when I need them. Now, there are two different types of panels here on the roof. You can see those uh, long skinny ones there and there's another one there. Those are unisolar panels that I installed many years ago. They are totally awesome and they're running strong, but that company's gone out of business. But I, uh, I want to keep those panels here on the roof because they perform really well and they really show no sign of, of giving up anytime soon. But uh, they are a different technology from the other panels that I have located up here on the roof. These semi-flexible panels here. There's one there. There's one there and there's also another semi-flexible uh, 100 watt panel up there. The unisolar panels there, those long skinny ones, are wired together to provide about 45 uh, volts of output. They're, uh, the two small ones are about equivalent to one long one. So they're like having two long ones in parallel and those output about 45 volts going to the uh, PV array number one and that solar charge controller number one. Now the, uh, the, these uh, 100 watt semi-flexible solar panels are wired in series. So all three of those are wired in series and uh, are going to that second uh, array input for that second solar charge controller that's PV2 and uh, those uh, output what about 300 300 watts total now each one of these panels I have wired uh, separately into this junction box 
behind me here that I'll show you. And uh, so each panel goes to its own input in that junction box so I can make all of my parallel and series connections in that box so I don't have to move any cables around all the time whenever I want to reconfigure or test the system. So even though everything looks like it's combined here, there are actually two separate arrays here that are independent of each other. And the output from the unisolar array actually comes out of this, uh, these two negative and positive outputs. And it goes through this cable here. And the output from the, uh, the second uh, flex panel array, of those 100 watt flex panels actually comes out uh, here and uh, is wired to this output here. Now this, these two uh, cable runs go to this other panel which uh, goes down into the roof of the RV and uh, through the wall and all the way down into uh, that storage compartment where those solar charge controllers are. Now I'm also able to put a little bit of a charge into my house batteries while I'm driving. Now I had to make a couple of modifications in order to, to do this effectively. Um, and it's using the, uh, the emergency start switch that came with our RV. Now, if you have one of these, you probably know how it works, but if you don't, what it does is it allows you to jumper your chassis battery in your motorhome with your house batteries in order to start one, kind of like a jump. Uh, it joins them together, so if your house battery is dead and you need to start your generator, you can, you can use your chassis battery to do that. Or if your chassis battery is dead, you can use your house battery to start your chassis battery. Now, it originally came with an instantaneous switch here, which meant it'll only connect them as long as you're holding the switch in. Now, I replaced that with a switch that I can turn on and leave on, but I also made sure it was a, a lighted switch so I knew that the two systems were connected. Now, another thing I did was uh, switch the uh, relay that this is connected to under the hood with what's called a continuous use relay. Now I don't use this setup all the time. A lot of people don't recommend it uh, because it does join the two systems. And, uh, but I found that in my case it, it doesn't do any damage and it works quite well when you need it. Now I also wanted to know while I was driving what the uh, voltage level was on my house battery. So I installed this little uh, voltage gauge here and it's on a switch and it's connected to my house batteries. So I can quickly see while I'm driving, you know, what uh, phase of charge uh, my charge controllers are on my batteries. So I can make a decision whether or not to just use the solar to continue to charge my batteries while I'm driving or whether I can activate this switch to charge then from my alternator. And I can do all that while I'm driving. This has been a really handy addition. Uh, it's right in my line of sight and it's uh, real easy to just glance over and see what those uh, what that voltage level is. It's been very useful. There's a lot of links that I'm going to put here in the description of the video to our website with diagrams and links to other videos that go into more depth. And also, if you are new to solar and have a lot of questions, go check out our free guide on RV Solar that I'll also link to in the description. But leave me your comments, questions below. You know what to do. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.